I have learned so much about raising sheep on a small scale. And as I'm winding down this operation, I think about all the lessons I've learned and how much time and money I could have saved if I did things differently. It's thousands of dollars and uh, probably over a hundred hours and definitely some sheep that uh, I've lost. All could have been avoided if I had known some lessons beforehand. And so this has just got me thinking what are the things that I wish I knew when I was getting started with a small scale sheep farm and what will I do differently when I raise sheep again. Yes, I will be raising sheep again. So I'm down to my last four sheep on my three year journey with full blood dorper. So two of these are going to be processed uh, tomorrow. I've got them in a little corral right now and I need to separate the two that are going to freezer camp and the two that uh, are going to be staying on as studs. Uh, studs for my neighbor because he wants a he wants to do his own little sheep farm operation which I'm super excited about. As I think about what ruminant we're going to be putting on the pasture again later this year, I just realized that there's a lot that I would be doing differently. So when I do sheep again, here are some of the things that I am absolutely going to be doing differently. The first thing that I would go back and tell my younger self before getting into sheep is start with rams. Start by finishing out rams. Um, it might You might be really eager to want to just jump into breeding sheep because you think that's where the money is. In true long term, obviously, that's where the profits are. But your first year, you're not going to make money anyway. So why don't you just figure out if you even like this and start out by buying a, a couple of rams and finish them out. So the benefits of starting with rams are you can validate do you even like sheep or not? Are they even going to be your animal? Another one is you don't have to worry about breeding sheep or lambing or separating or weaning, um, all those can be really hard and taxing, especially on a small scale for a first timer. And you won't have to deal with that with rams. You probably won't need to overwinter your rams if you if you buy one that was lambed um, in early spring. You could probably process it um, at least partially through the winter, so you won't have to carry a ram throughout the entire winter. You can just finish it on hay maybe some grain if that's your thing. Because overwintering an uh, entire set of breeding ewes uh, that are pregnant can be expensive because of the hay purchases. I don't know if I made that clear. With rams, uh, you usually process a ram at, uh, I, I think with a dorper, um, between like 10 to 14 months is prime time. Uh, another thing is you probably will not have many run-ins with parasites or other illnesses. Again, you just have a younger, healthier animal and you don't have them for as long. And finally, my favorite thing is that the startup costs are much lower. Some commercial rams that you're never gonna breed might cost you you know 150 to 250 bucks per sheep. Whereas, you know, a good set of breeding ewes, uh, you could be, you know, good quality, whether they've got papers or not, could be you know, 500 to 1500 dollars per ewe, depending on you know its pedigree, if it's papered, the breed, whatever. But it's always going to be cheaper, um, pound for pound, to just finish out rams. Okay, so um, my second piece of advice, maybe the most controversial, is I would not start with full bloods. Full bloods are going to be more expensive, and truthfully, if you're a first time sheep buyer, you might fall into the same trap that I did that if they're full blood, therefore they are healthier. No, you can have a fantastic commercial non-papered sheep just as easy as you can have a papered crummy sheep. I've learned that the hard way. The reason why I think a lot of people are drawn to full bloods is because you start looking at prices and you're like, there's money to be made here. And yes, you can make good money uh, with selling full bloods. That's been the bulk of my sale has been through selling papered full blood. But if it were me, and this is what I will be doing when I get back into sheep, um, I'm going to just start with a good flock of commercial ewes, or at least non-full blood ewes, and possibly get a papered ram for a specific breed. Now, why this is critical is I think that because uh, you're used you're going to have more ewes than rams or at least you should because uh, depending on your size you probably only need one ram and I would get used to it for a few years um, and just just see what I can produce at that point you can get used to you know what's a good sheep what's a coal sheep you really get your your feet underneath you and then once you've got that operation going I would buy a handful of whatever full blood or purebred ewes that you want to start breeding and basically you know you can have a mixed flock obviously you know use good tag management and mark your sheep but then you've got you know commercial sheep that have a great sire 
and you've got some full blood papered sheep too. If you're going to want to get to any notable size, you'll probably have customers that just want feeder rams. You'll have some customers that want breeder ewes and everything in between. And if you're able to offer a wider, you know, product essentially, um, it'll make a lot more sense. But it will be a lot cheaper, and you'll save a lot more money by not starting with full blood. So you can make your mistake with the cheaper sheep. And also, it kind of stinks, you know, if all you have is full bloods and you're wanting to put some lamb in the freezer, it can kind of hurt to put, you know, a sheep that its pedigree says it should be worth 1200 bucks, but, you know, you, you don't want to necessarily put that in the freezer just because just because that's what it's worth. It can make life easier is what I'm saying. Okay, number three, buy local. When I first started with sheep, I was in Utah, and luckily I had people um, near me who, I, I mean, they were seriously like 15 miles away from me raising Dorper. They're one of the best, you know, Dorper producers, two brothers. They were just awesome. So I really lucked out there. And then I blew it when I moved to North Carolina because I brought those sheep with me. They weren't acclimated to North Carolina. I lost almost half of my breeding ewes that first summer. And, and I even went against the advice of my mentors um, because I was too emotionally attached to my sheep. So I would start with, with local sheep. I don't care if you find somebody who, you know, oh, they're amazing. They're five states away from me, but, you know, their sheep are legendary. Um, kind of for the same reason I would go commercial over full blood is you just don't need to waste the money uh, doing that because I would rather have sheep that are, you know, locally suited to what, to what I'm doing here. Also, you'll have a built-in mentor who is maybe just, you know, within your county versus somebody who's five states away and is never going to take your calls again. So if I was starting over, you know, in Utah, the Dorper did great. Um, I think they still have a little bit to work on in terms of parasite resistance. So when I start over, um, I'm probably going to go with something local, which a lot of people around here raise St. Saint Croix or Katahdin or something in between. The next thing is have infrastructure before you start. When I was in Utah getting started, um, I had everything I, I needed. And then when I moved out to North Carolina, I had a lot more land. And I foolishly, as we just talked about, brought my sheep with me. Don't bring your sheep with you. I promise you, if you only have like five sheep, just sell them and start over. Don't move your sheep across the country. If you learn anything from this video, don't do what I did. When we arrived at North Carolina, we had um, we have almost 12 acres of property and not a single acre of grass. So as much as people like to talk about sheep are really good at eating weeds, it's like, yeah, but they're not going to clear a forest for me. They're not going to clear down a blackberry patch for me. Um, also, I have no fence. I had zero fence out here. So have pasture and have fence at least before you open the floodgates of sheep. When I was filming videos for YouTube on that time, I, I put a good smile on and kind of just rolled with the punches, but it was hard. I was dying inside. Dying. And that led to burnout. Nobody wants burnout. So get the infrastructure. Okay, finally, I would say the, the last thing, and I've never done it, and I'll definitely be doing it, and that is make an annual schedule. It can feel really stressful when you're just living day to day with sheep, but even just making a simple schedule to include things like when to put the ram out with the ewes, when to rotate the sheep to a new pasture, when to seed a new pasture, when to vaccinate, when to famacha check the sheep, when to drench the sheep. It's just really stressful when you're just kind of flying by the seat of your pants. This could have just taken me an afternoon to just map this out, and I've never done it. I really should have uh, made an annual schedule. So I gotta wrap this up because I'm losing sunlight and I gotta separate um, two of these rams so they'll be easier to, to cart away in the morning. And it's kind of a strange thing, you know, really saying goodbye to, uh, to my last sheep from this, uh, from this, from this thing. This little adventure I had, this thing, I guess is what I'm calling it now. Um, I'll have these two rams for a little bit more because, like I said, my neighbor, he still has to fence in his pasture before he can pick up his rams. I just can't seem to get rid of all my sheep, which is great. I really like having them here. But as you can see, I have land. I have pasture. Um, I would really... This is, this is a sincere question um, and ask that I have. If anyone in the channel has, you know, raised goats or cows... Um, and sheep, I'd be interested to say, you know, what, what do you think? There, there's pluses and minuses to all of those. Um, let me know in the comments, like, what, what do you think I should be doing next? I'm open to doing sheep again immediately. I'm opening to finishing up some meat goats. I'm opening, I'm open to finishing up um, two steers on this about four and a half acres of pasture. So let me know. You guys are all very smart people, and sincerely, I'd love to know if you have any advice for me. 
Thanks for watching today and thanks for watching this incredible journey with sheep. There's going to be more sheep to come and uh, I'll keep sharing it with you. I'm PJ with the High Mountain Homestead and I will see you on the next video.